and today for a topic I want to share on the topic the hallmark of victory the hallmark of victory amen let's turn in our Bibles to first John chapter 5 that is our text first John chapter 5 And I would read just one verse there. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Shall we pray? Father, we're here before you again. Shed light into your word for us. We are longing to hear from you. Our hearts are open and we are willing to hear. Speak, Father. Grant us insights into your word. The Father, Lord, at the end of today and in the days to come we will begin to experience constant tangible and significant victory as we overcome by our faith in jesus name thank you lord amen praise god and this is the victory that overcomes the world our faith like i said today we're going to speak on the hallmark of victory when we're talking about hallmark what do we mean by that because that needs to be broken down a bit hallmark of victory simply means a stamp or a distinguished characteristics a trait a feature or a feature to indicate the origin, the purity, and the genuineness of a thing. So in this context, we're looking at what is the stamp, what is the distinguishing characteristics, what is the trait, what is the key feature to indicate the origin, the purity, and the genuineness of our victory. Amen. The origin, the purity, and the genuineness of our victory. What is it that we need to take note, identify, and continuously cultivate in our lives to ensure constant and lasting victory? This is what we need to look at today. Because many times as Christians, we talk about the desire to overcome. And the Bible says that they overcame them. God wants us to be overcomers. It is expedient that we overcame. It is very important that we overcome. Because that is the reason why Jesus came. To destroy the works of the devil. So we can overcome. Some time ago we were slaves to sin. Jesus came to set us free and make us overcomers. The Bible says that to them that believe he has given them power to become but there must be evidence to these things Hebrews chapter 1 I will just read from verse 1 to 6 it says now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen there must be a substance to these things that is that we hope for there must be an evidence a hallmark 
to the things that we so much desire. Victory means there must be a contention. If you're going to have victory, there is no way you can have victory without a fight. I'm a great fan of boxing. I love boxing a lot. And the sports, you know, is an age, it's an age-long boxing. Nobody would say he invented boxing. It's an age-long sport. And it's interesting that yesterday there was um, a British fighter who has never fought in the, who, who has not fought in Britain for about uh, 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 um, uh, for about five years now. And the last time he even fought was two years, and he got defeated. And there became questions about his ability, his strength, his capability, in the sense that this young man is getting old and he may have lost his strength. But he needed to come back. He needed to overcome. He needed an evidence to show that he still got the strength. He still got his skills. He still got the energy. He still got the talent. He still got, he's still a winner. And he came in yesterday and he finished his opponent in a 12 round match. In a 12 round bout, he finished his opponent in the first 40 seconds. It means he had to overcome something. And evidence that he still got something within him is that he overcame in a significant, profound manner. Before people could even have their seats, he already knocked this guy out. With the first three blows, he passed this guy out. Amen. That is significant. That is a hallmark of victory. It's going to go down in the sands of time that this man for two years, he was down and out. There was nothing to write on about him and the press seems to have written him off sometimes. And it seemed to see his face became a face of someone who has had it but no longer have it. But he had to do some comeback. He had to do some comeback. And I tell you what, we have to do some comeback today. And I believe that as we are seated today, God will begin to inspire us for a great divine comeback of an, or for a great divine comeback and overcoming comeback by our faith in the name of Jesus. I say to you that God wants us to overcome. The desire of God is for us to overcome. The desire of God is for us to overcome. However, what is the hallmark? that we are overcoming what is the hallmark what is the evidence that victory is sure for us what is that thing that shows us and tells us that victory is sure in spite of the of the of the the, 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 the gory situation at our hands in spite of the hopelessness that was that is before us in spite of the pressure that is around us in spite of our downfalling and our downtrodden situation and circumstance what is the hallmark what is the hallmark that God will increase us as a church in spite of the fact that we seem to be putting in so much effort and it seems as if nothing or very little is coming out of it what is the hallmark of the presence of God what is the hallmark that we will overcome in our family is what is a hallmark when pressure hits us, when economic issues hits us, when things seem to see it doesn't seem to work. What is the evidence that we will overcome? What is that distinguished characteristic? What is that trait? What is that feature? And I roll it up into two. And today we're just going to look at those two points and we'll tie it up and we'll finish it. I call them the two hallmark of our victory. The two hallmark of victory. And the hallmark of victory is the disposition of our faith and the testimony of our faith. The disposition of our faith and the testimony of our faith. These two have got to be present in our lives for there to be constant victory. 
And I guarantee you that as long as we have this tool in our lives, victory is forever sure. I do not care what you're going through. I do not care. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter your circumstances. But I want to announce to you that if you've got that disposition of faith and you have the testimony of faith in place and intact in your lives, whereby it is not shaken, it is not moved, I want to promise you that God will definitely ensure your victory your victory will forever be sure hallelujah praise god forevermore let's look at hebrews chapter 1 again and just hebrews chapter 11 let's continue that reading from this hebrews 11 from this one it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By it the elders obtained a good testimony by faith. Let's hold that. Let's, let's draw that line. How did the elders obtain a good testimony? By faith. But verse 3. By faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, so that the things which are which are seen are not made of things which are visible. Now, when God, when the scripture says by faith the elders obtain a good testimony in Hebrews 11, the next thing is for us to begin to consider what is that really? What is that word? How did they obtain good testimony? And from the three, the scripture begins to express to us how they did. The first thing is this, is the recognition that the words were framed by the word of God. I'll just read up to verse 6. It said, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Through which he obtained witness, obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he obtained he, he, he through it he being dead still speaks. So it doesn't matter your this situation, you can still speak. By faith Enoch was away, was taken away, so that he did not see death and was found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. You can see that there is this testimony they had. He had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, what do we mean by what does this scripture what is this scripture trying to bring out? Or let me bring out a few things from this scripture. The world was framed by faith by the word of god by faith we know by faith we understand there is an understanding that comes with faith that the worlds were formed by the word of god now when you look at that word world i don't want you to get it mixed up because that word world does not mean at this world okay that word world is from the Greek word ion and ion means or eon whichever way you want to pronounce it ion whichever way you want to pronounce it but it simply means ages times seasons amen ages times and seasons which means the elders obtained good testimony and we know they understood that this world, our ages, our times, our seasons, they are framed by the word of God. Friends, your life, your timing, 
your dispensation is framed by the word of God the Bible says in, in, in Psalms 139 it says that we are fearfully and, and fearf wonderfully and fearfully made by God God knew us in our deepest frame amen it says you formed me in my inward part Psalm 139 verse 13 you formed me in my inward part you covered me in my mother's womb God knew you right from time he knew when you were going to come he was he's assigned you and apportioned your timing your season God knows and everything he has declared and he has spoken out now what do we, we like this, I've, I've mentioned two things our disposition and our testimony the word of God has got to form our disposition our disposition is our mindset towards God's word the world was formed your world has been framed by the word of God God has framed you up God has formed you God has set you up God has designed you God has intended you and when he intended you he wrote you in the books scripture says in the book of Hebrews he said behold I come in the volume of the books it is written of me to do your will O God God has written of you to come at this time hence you're not a mistake the people you're involved with is not a mistake God has designed you when God sent Jacob to Israel to, to, to Egypt the Bible, when God sent a, a, a Joseph to Egypt even though he went to Egypt as a slave but the Bible says Joseph had this testimony. <laughs> he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. It was the will of God that I came. And God established the children of Israel in Egypt for 400 years. Why? Because God had framed them before time. Because he said to Abraham, for your children you will go into Egypt and they will be there for 400 years. God is orchestrating your steps. It doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what people say about you it doesn't matter where you're coming from it doesn't matter the economic situation it doesn't matter the family situation one thing is sure the world your world has been framed by the word of God you need to have that understanding by faith you need to have the understanding by faith we understand that's what the scripture says by faith we understand you need to have that understanding that my life is framed by the word of God God knows me God has written a scripture about me there is a word of God that has gone ahead of me there is a word of God that will not fail because of me heaven and earth shall pass away this situation will come and go the word of God concerning me will not fail if we have that mindset in us I promise you friends that we will never be shaken why because that will form the disposition of faith what do we mean by disposition disposition means to be disposed to something this position means to it, 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 it is an act of putting something in place to put in place to set in ready to set in readiness a disposition to be disposed to something or disposition means to settle a matter finally that means you have got to settle it within you. You have got to settle it within you. You are not running from pillar to post. You know that my world is framed by the word of God. The Bible says, and, 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 and Enoch had this testimony that he walked with God. He pleased the Lord because, not because he came to church. 
Not because he, 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 he did charitable things. Not because he was so nice to people and he spoke well. No, but because he understood that his life came out, is burned, the dispensation of his life, the flame of his life, the timing of his life, the things that happens around him, all cannot be above the word of God. Because it is the word of God that has formed him. And in that he learned to walk in God and with God. He settled it once and for all. Friends, we need to settle the matter. Until we settle the matter in our lives. That without faith, without believing in God, it is impossible to please him. Without our belief in God, without faith in God, it is impossible to please him. We've got to settle that matter. We've got to settle that matter. Our disposition of faith is the final arrangement or settlement of the matter of faith in our lives. It is the final arrangement or settlement. Hallelujah. 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 It is the prevailing tendency. What is the prevailing tendency in your life? What is the prevailing tendency in your life? Is it your faith? Is it your faith? What is the prevailing tendency? What are you mainly predisposed to do? When things happen, do you run to the word of God that has framed you? Or do you begin to think or do something else? Do you begin to conjure other options? Do you begin to view other alternatives? Or do you run to the world? Do you connect with God? Do you engage with God? What is your prevailing tendency? Do you begin to cry and moan? Hallelujah. What is your prevailing tendency? Do you begin to say, Oh, we remember the cucumber. We remember when we were in the world. We remember the thing God has done in Egypt without realizing the tendencies should be towards the Lord. That if he has done it before, he would do it again. Many Christians do not even believe that Jesus or God part the Red Sea through Moses. The Red Sea was parted through Moses. They read it as a storybook. But they do not have the predisposition to believe that. Hence, they cannot, as, they cannot think or conceive the fact that God will do something in their lives. They cannot think that God will do something good, great in their lives. But I tell you what, God wants to do something great in your life. God wants to do something great in your life, but what is your disposition? What is, a, what is your tendency? The disposition of our faith is the tendency, is our tendency of acting in a certain manner under given circumstances. Amen. I'll give you this testimony. My daughter Joanne, when she was born, had great challenges with speech, communication generally. And my wife being a medical doctor could already see the signs that this child 
is possibly autistic. And of course, there have been so many tests, and the only thing that was left was to diagnose her and conclude that he's an autistic child. And what did I do? I had to start getting engaging with God. My natural disposition was not to go to the hospital. My natural disposition was to connect with God. Why? Because two years before Joel was born, the Lord said to me, you will have a child who will come in the spirit and in the order of Joshua. And I knew that God has a plan. So, when the reports come, oh, they were ugly. They were gory. All the description of my child was nothing to write home about. In fact, you will give up and just throw in the towel. You will accept the testimony of the enemy. Whatever your disposition is will determine your testimony. Your testimony. If you have a predisposition, if you have a disposition towards faith, your testimony will be of faith. And whenever they send it, my wife would read it to me and show me what the implication is. And I would say to her, I know what they've said, but I know what he said. She comes in the spirit and in the order of Joshua. They will bring all the things. She comes in the spirit and the order of Joshua. And I started saying to my wife, I said to her, you need to come around to this point. Whose report are you going to believe? What will be your disposition? Are you going to be predisposed to your medical knowledge? Your medical inclination? The physical traits and the physical features that make you conclude certain diagnoses? Or are you going to come around to the word of God and the power of his word? What is going to be your predisposition? And God one day engaged with my wife and said to her, the issue is not Joanne, there's nothing wrong with her. The issue is you. Until the day you begin to change, you can't see anything. And she shared that with me, and, to, and, 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 and she obediently, she just switched. And she began to see the word of God more. I can remember those days, she would paste the scriptures all over the wall. We would print out scriptures, and we would just paste it all over the world. Wall, and we would play daily scriptures scriptures of faith that will you know tell us of she will keep confessing them she will keep saying them and in less than three months things started to change a child who they started defining as autistic, autistic they said they didn't even know what is going on anymore because things are beginning to change Things are beginning to change. In six months, she started to communicate. And the rest is history today. What am I saying? Until your disposition change. If your predisposition is to begin to consider your issues, your situation, your condition, you know, like I don't have money, uh, that is why I can't come to church, and uh, you know, I don't have this, that is why I cannot do this, and uh, you know, it is because I am limited, it's because, listen, there is no time that is convenient for you to live in the world. But every time is the best time to live in the world. Hallelujah. Every time is best for you to live in the world. So I want to encourage us that our predisposition has got to be towards God. What do you believe? Do you truly believe the, sea, the Red Sea parted? Oh, I remember when I had the issue with my visa to, to resign in this country. And it was as if things will never happen. 
And I locked myself up in the room without communicating with anyone. For about a month, I was just, if I just go to work, come back, I just locked myself up. And I remember I would keep playing my guitar. And I keep singing a song. You can never fail. You can never fail. You can never fail with Jesus. I know you can never fail. And I will pray the song and I will cry to God. I pray the song and I will cry to God. And I said to him, I know you have the Red Sea. I know you change the course of destiny for people. You can change the course of destiny for me. I refuse to listen to what people say. I know this is the report. I know these are the conditions I've got to meet. I don't have what it takes to meet this condition. But you can change my life. You can turn it around for me. And friends, he did. I didn't have to fake it till I make it. I know that's the statement we make, we say these days. No, I came to God just as it is. And God ripped it out for me. Why? Because my, my disposition was towards God. Friends, do we first run to the hospital or we run to God? I'm not saying the hospital is bad. Do we? Do we have to check out through all the things, all the other options? The physical options. Or do we get the word of God? Do we go into God and get the word of God? Because when we get the word of God in our lives, we will have the second edge sword. Our disposition will be towards God and our testimony will be of faith. Our testimony will be of faith. The Bible says, for he has this testimony. This testimony. It says, by faith, we, the elders obtained good testimony. Friends, what is your testimony? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, it says, for they overcame him. Look at that. Revelation chapter 12, I think verse 11, the, the, the end part of verse 11. Uh, or rather, yeah, the end part of verse, verse, verse uh, 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 um, yeah, verse 11, sorry. Revelation chapter, chapter 12, verse 11. He says, what, he, say, he says what? He says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Do you love your life so much that you feel that God may not walk on this one, so I have to consider alternative? Because really, that's, 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 the, that's the issue. It's a trust thing. Our disposition has to do with the trust in God's word. While we trust in God's word, our testimony will be affirmed. What is the affirmation of your testimony? Do we say, oh please, let's be real here. I know spiritual things are good, but let's talk reality here. The reality of what is your reality? Is the reality the physical things that you see, or your reality is the word of God? Your disposition of faith is predicated on your reality in the word of God. And that will set your testimony. You will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. The blood of the Lamb is already shed. Jesus has already obtained the victory. That's a positional statement. The experiential statement is because we declare and we take a position. We declare and we have a disposition towards the word of God. Revelation 19, verse 10, towards the end, he says, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Friends, when you begin to speak the word of God, you're already prophesying. 
when they were coming up with different things of how my daughter holds the pen, how she walks, it's like if she walks through the wall, she has no, she has no coordination and all those kind of stuff. I kept declaring the word that he said to me. She comes in the spirit and in the order of Joshua. I do not care what you say. I said to my wife, I do not care whether she begins to eat dust on the ground or she begins to eat grass like an animal. I do not care her physical situation. I do not care what the doctors and the professionals say. What I care is what he said to me. She comes in the spirit and the order of Joshua. And the Bible says, out of the mouth of, of, of babes and sucklings, the Lord has perfected praise. I kept on with that word. I refused to give up. Do we give up so easily? What is your testimony? Whose report will you believe? Who has believed that report? Isaiah 53. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? What is the testimony? Because as you begin to speak the word, as you begin to speak the word, the spirit of prophecy is already in action. And when you begin to speak and testify of your predisposition, when you begin to say, I do not care what happens. I just believe God and because he said so. I believe him with every bit of my life. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen anyway. Abraham in Romans chapter 4 the Bible says did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb nor his own deadness of body but the Bible says he believed and he was giving glory to God that was his disposition he believed God and he was counted to him for righteousness. To a point that he changed his name and his confession, his testimony started to align with his disposition. His testimony started to align with his disposition. The testimony to testify means a first hand authentication of facts. Testimony means an open acknowledgement. Do you openly acknowledge God's word? Do you openly acknowledge your, dispensation, your disposition? Testimony means to publicly, uh, a public profession. And I like this one. This, he says testimony, the testimony of our faith is a solemn, formal and dignified declaration made or orally under oath as the oath of the word in response to interrogation in response to an interrogation your situation will interrogate you your circumstance will interrogate you people will ask you questions about what you believe what is your disposition what it will be your confession what will be your confession what will be your declaration? Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. What is your, predis your, predispos your, your disposition of faith is your belief. And then your testimony of faith is your confession. The Bible says in Romans, it says, For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're going to live in victory, constant victory all your life, our disposition of faith must align to our testimony of faith. As long as what we say agrees with what we do and what we believe, victory will always be sure. This is how the men of old triumphed. This 
this is simply how they triumphed. They were not willing to trade what they believed for an alternative. And friends, don't just say, yes, I believe. It's not about zeal. It's about you reassessing your heart and checking yourself, what do I really believe? What, am I, what do I have tendency towards? What is my natural tendencies? Is it towards God? Is it towards His Word? Amen. What are my natural tendencies? The man of old triumphed because they had these two. The disposition, they were disposed to the faith, to faith. And their testimony was of faith. And God backed up their words. I see you triumph over every situation in the name of Jesus. I see you triumph over every situation in the name of Jesus. Even if your flesh is no is, is, is not connecting because you know it's always it has a natural tendency towards logical things, and the equation doesn't seem the equation of God's word in your life doesn't seem to align with what you're seeing. I want to encourage you to believe anyway. Keep believing and act based on your trust in God's word. And I see that as you begin to act and speak into your situation and speak into your life, speak into your circumstance, speak into your family, begin to align your disposition with your confession. It is not, you know, this, the, you know, you know the, the, we, the Christianese, we, 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 we say so many things like name it and claim it and all those kind of things. You speak and it comes to pass. No, but the, how you speak and it comes to pass is when your belief aligns with what you say. When your heart and your mind comes together as one. When God's word is aligned with yours, the Bible says, if my word abide, if you abide in me and my words abide in you then you will ask whatever you want and it shall be done for you what disposition is to allow God's word to abide in us and then we declare based on what he has said and we will live in forever victory this friends is the hallmark of victory the disposition of our faith and the testimony of our faith we will get there we will overcome constantly overcome in Jesus name shall we pray father thank you for your word thank you for your word